Hi, my friends again. Hi, hi, hi. Uh, okay, this is the last video, my friends, of of this module for you. Um, you have to keep in mind, right? So if you if you were coming to class, um, twice every um every week, that means four times, right? For two weeks, four times fifty. 200 minutes. So I'm not even giving you 200 minutes of lecture, I think, I hope, right? So um, you just have to make sure that you you compartmentalize um, your um, your um, study of the of the videos, right? Okay, my friends. So I'm I'm gonna we're gonna talk about. Um, Omayyads later on. I'm going to talk about the conquest later on. A lot of a lot of material that I have told you about. Uh, you know, every part of it could be a whole whole semester basically. You know, the conquest, the Omayyads, the caliphate. The, you know, the rightly guided caliphs. All of these can be courses on their own. So I'm just giving you the bare outlines, but. Together with my, and and we will come back to a lot of these again and again and again through the through the semester. We're only on the uh, on the second model right now. So okay, so let's let's go. I'm going to talk about Odomayets later on for you know next module. Uh, but now I want to talk about a little bit about the Quran and um, what is the holy book of the uh, of the. Uh, of the of Muslims, right? Which is called Quran. Sometimes they write it as Quran. This is not correct, right? Um, this is the way, the correct way of rendering uh, Arabic term uh, Quran in in. And transliteration, right? Usually, when you see this, oh, I'm sorry, uh, when you see this thing about uh, is uh, on on top of the a, it's called uh, a. It becomes an a, and this one is a glottal uh, sound, right? This is a um, um, you know virgul the other way around, right? Excuse me, Quran, and it comes from the same root as Iqra. In other words, it's a book, right, that calls it itself recitation, right? Quran is a book that calls itself recitation, right? Iqra, Iqra is the first, um, first uh, revelation that happened to the Prophet Muhammad, right, that came down to the Prophet Muhammad, which said, you know, Iqra bisma rabbika lazi khalaqa khalaq al-insan min al-alaq, right, uh, recite in the name of uh, your uh, God, your Lord, who created uh, mankind, humans, from a blood clot, right, and the Prophet received the, uh, the revelations in, and uh, this is, Mount Hira, this is the cave of Mount Hira, which is near Mecca, and it's still, as you see, is um, is uh, sort of visited by um, by pilgrim pilgrims. You see how the pilgrims are trying to get to the cave, and here they are at the cave, and. Uh, this is the this is truncated, but it's the angel Gabriel coming to the Prophet Muhammad uh, on the mountain and asking him to recite, right? So um, these recitations kept coming during the lifetime of the Prophet. They say that when recitations came, the Prophet Muhammad went into a basically a state of shock. He would perspire. He would you know he would. He would, he would basically go to a state of consciousness, if you will, right? Um, only, right? And these surahs begin to come down to the Prophet Muhammad. Um, so now the uh, Quran, together with a number of other things, um, uh, 
make the make the foundations of Islamic law, which is called Sharia, right? Islamic law, which is called the Sharia, to which we will get shortly. Okay, but so um, the the most important base of the Sharia is the Quran, the holy book of the um, of. Uh, Islam, it is the the revelations are supposed to be the revelations of God um, that is communicated through the angel and Gabriel. So, in other words, the Quran is the word of God. Altogether, uh, through the life of the Prophet, hundred and fourteen chapters, surahs or chapters, right, uh, came down to the prophets. And these are uh, comprised of uh, more than 6,000 verses, ayahs, which literally means signs, like ayatollah, the sign of Allah, right? And, and um, we have divided these to the um, Meccan surahs, which are usually found at the end of the Qur'an uh, and the Medinan surahs. So the Meccan surahs are, are uh, very much apocalyptic. They're short surahs, they're very powerful. Uh, and because the Qur'an is arranged according to the length of the surahs from the La, from the longest to the shortest, the Meccan surahs who, that are the shortest come at the end of the Quran, and the Medinan surahs come uh, at the beginning of the Quran, and uh, um, and uh, and these are the you know different hundred and forty. The names were given to them later on, um, right? And uh, and so on and so forth. So um, the 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 um, uh, uh, okay. So the prophet when the when, when the these uh, surahs were being uh, sort of revealed to him, uh, he would come and recite it to his small band of followers according to tradition, and the the uh, they would write these on. On, on stones, pieces of parchment, anything else on which you could, on, um, you know, on, on, um, on, yeah, on walls and stuff like that, I mean, yeah, on whatever that you could, um, you could find to um, write on. Um, the, the tradition has it that it was first compiled by the Caliph Abu Bakr, right, uh, who we know uh, ruled from 632 to 634. Then it was again codified by, the tradition has it, by Osman, right, um, so that by 650s, we are told, right, a complete codex um, of Quran is created, we are told. Right, but um, but uh, you know, in recent years, um, we have found some of these early specimens of a uh, Quran, which is called um, also Mushaf. Right, um, and uh, and uh, the one that you see here, it's a piece of one piece. Uh, 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 of one surah of the Quran, as you can see, it has no dotting uh, on it and no vowelization or anything, right? So you could and 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 in Arabic, def depending on where you put the vowels, the meaning of a word might change, right? So some argue that at this point there are there are quite a bit of different. Um, readings of the Quran. Some argue that no, they're not that different once you punctuate it and so on and, and, and you put vowels on it. But what is interesting is that the oldest part 
uh, most half that they have found uh, from um, uh, from uh, from the Quran belongs to a period from five seventies or um, um, oh here five sixty eight to six forty five right um, the oldest uh, must have carbon dated to five sixty eight to six forty five if the five sixty eight um, uh, sort of um, dating is closer to the truth then of course we have a piece of Quran that is uh, that is created um, I'm sorry prior even to the birth of Prophet Muhammad according to tradition right 568 as, as opposed to 570 so um, there are actually a lot of controversies um, over the Quran, over the origins of Quran, over whether or not you know what were the what were the influences on the Quran? Was there a Judaic influence on the Quran? Was there uh, a Christian influence on the Quran? On, on the Quran? Um, uh, was there an Iranian influence on the Quran? This last will have to be written by myself. But okay, my friends. So I'm teaching you these courses, this course, um, as a as a historian, right? So in other words, I am stepping outside of any belief system, right, in order to teach the course to you. So I will teach this course critically, right? I have thus far given you the the traditional account of the rise of Islam and uh, and 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 the creation of the Quran right but um but um but we will uh, we will um um, I will I will also start giving you the critical versions of it as we proceed uh, the critical version of 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 the whole story that I have um, told you um, up to now and um, and um, but just you know I'm going to make this a very short uh, one on the Quran um, no matter how it is created and in when it was codified and what influences were on the Quran, the point of the f the fact remains that for the Muslims, the Quran is a holy book, right? And in fact, it contains the word and speech of Allah, God, as communicated to him through the uh, angel Gabriel, according to, to Muslim belief, from 610 to 632, the, at the death of the Prophet Muhammad, and codified the way that I told you it has been codified. So now the Prophet Muhammad uh, in the Islamic tradition actually uh, is supposed to be a regular human being, right? He is not divine like Jesus. Um, he is not a son of God or anything. Yeah, um, the Muslims... Uh, uh, The Muslims believe in the Christian tradition. The Muslims accept the Judaic tradition. Um, you know there is they they accept both both traditions, but they they the argument is that the people of the book, right, uh, which are the Muslims, Jews. Uh, which are Muslims, Jews, Christians, and Iranians, and we have not talked about this, and we will, who had their own prophetology, and their own holy book, um, and, uh, and 
they were Zoroastrians. I will have something to say to you. And they had a holy book about this, which is very important. Their holy book is Avesta, and their uh, their prophet is is uh, Zoroaster, and hence Zoroastrianism. <coughs> Excuse me, um, uh, Zoroaster, and the divine being is called. Uh, Ahura, I'm sorry, Ahura. Well, let me write this properly for you. So, Muslim, Jews, and Christians. Um, let's see, yeah, this is a nice white place where I could write for you. Okay, so um, Zoroastrianism, Zoroastrianism, Prophet Zoroaster, Holy Book Avesta, Divine Being, One God, Ahura. Mazda, who is the source of good, the very important distinction between uh, the Iranian religions and the Abrahamic religions, which is Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, right? Because Islam considers itself a continuation of the Abrahamic tradition and argues that uh, the people of the book had gone uh, astray uh, and had gone astray. Therefore, there is the need for a new revelation and a, a new religion which would give the ultimate and to the population of the world, according to the Muslim belief, of course, the Jews give, believe the same thing. They believe that the Old Testament is uh, is the last of the testaments. But then they come, the Christians come, and they uh, they they you know they bring the Bible and they call it the New Testament. But the Jews don't accept. Some accept it. Some don't accept it. And then the Christians call. Uh, you know, call call it the Bible, and then the Muslim call, Muslims call and come and they say, yeah, 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 uh, we accept the um, Torah, the Pentateuch, right? Five books of Judaism. We uh, we accept the Bible, the 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 what? But here is the Quran, which supersedes all of that. But anyway, the the one major difference between the Zoro the Zoroastrians and the Abrahamic religion is that for the Zoroastrians, the source of good and source of evil come from for, from two separate have, are are two separate entities created, right? And evil do, does not emanate from good, right? Uh, so there, so therefore, evil in the world can be explained much easier through the Zoroastrian uh, sort of um, uh, understanding of good and evil, because we uh, in the Abrahamic religion we are always wondering if God is good, where is this evil coming from, right? So we will talk about it later and. Um, and, and that is a very, very important distinction. And uh, just, just briefly, uh, I must tell you that a number of um, issues that we now take for granted in the Abrahamic religions uh, all argue, all agree is actually coming from uh, from the Iranian religions, from Zoroastrianism, the, your concept of heaven and hell. 
the concept of hereafter, the concept of the day of judgment, which involves apocalypse, apocalypse, no either, apocalypse, uh, which you needs a messiah, right? And, 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 and the angel, angelology, right? Uh, in, in like the, the conception of angels. All of this, right, um, Iranian specialists and um, a good pro proportion of, of uh, uh, Judaic and Christian uh, specialists argue this is coming from the Zoroastrianism or Zoroastrian religion and of course I could give you a whole course about this but I will not so the um, um, yes so uh, we will talk about the conversion of the people of the bo um, book but uh, and as I said I uh, the, there there is no miracles that are sort of attributed to Prophet Muhammad initially he's supposed to be a human right with really very little um, uh, very little um, divine as a no divine essence really but you know later traditions um, attributed um, attributed um, uh, various kind of various kinds of of miracles and whatnot to the Prophet Muhammad. One of these has to do with the fact that the Prophet uh, Muhammad is in one uh, at one of his one of the nights that he was asleep. He is supposed to have the angel Gabriel is supposed to have come to him and is supposed to have uh, taken him on a on a um, on a uh, on a horse which is a, a special horse and it's called Burak, right? They uh, he is supposedly taken to Jerusalem. He see uh, where he sees, uh, you know, um, uh, where he sees the city itself, and then taken to to the heavens where he sees. Um, you know Jesus and Moses and 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 what uh, uh, what not and to this whole uh, ascension and the Muslims give the name of Mi'raj, which literally means ascension, my friends. Right. So uh, as I told you that the that um, Islam the very one of the first foundations of Islamic law or Sharia that you hear that much about is the Quran. So gradually, it, the, this Sharia is gradually developed, right? Of course, the um, the the Quran belongs ostensibly to the to the lifetime of Prophet Muhammad, according to the Islamic tradition. But then you have the tra traditions of the Prophet. So you know when the Muslims scatters the tradition has it, and they go to uh, various regions where, you know, they have their different, their own religions, right, Christianity, Zoroastrianism in Iran, and Christianity, and Judaism in Iran, and, you know, all over the area of Western Asia that we are talking about, and people have not seen Prophet Muhammad, and, and uh, really have only read parts of the revelations of the Quran so they want to know about Islam and they began begin asking questions right from those who have been contemporaneous to the Prophet Muhammad and i.e. they are companions of Prophet or the next generation which are the companions of the companions right of the Prophet 
right? For those of you who want to know, the first are called sab Sahaba companions, and the second are called Ta Be Un, meaning followers of the Sahaba, right? So um, these are ostensibly are also scattered uh, according to the Islamic tradition. Um, during the course of the conquest in various parts of the world. So people want to know about Islam and they say, well, what do you know about Prophet Muhammad? And, um, and somebody who, who knows a little bit more about Prophet Muhammad uh, and who has seen the Prophet Muhammad who has, or who has seen a companion of the Prophet Muhammad comes and says, okay, you want to know Islam? about Islam again we go here okay you want to know about Islam he says and he says well I have heard from X who has heard from Y? Who has heard from Z? Who was a companion of Prophet? I.e. who saw or heard the Prophet, right? That I have heard from X, who have heard from Y, who has heard from Z, who has heard from the Prophet, or who has seen the, uh, the Prophet, that um, Prophet, the Prophet Muhammad was finicky about cleanliness, for instance. This becomes, excuse me, this becomes a tradition with a small t, right? a s tradition with a small t, it's called, and I want you to know this, <clears throat> a hadith, which basically means a story, right? The tradition with a small c, which basically is a hadith, is comprised of a chain of transmission, plus a, a content of the tradition itself. So this is chain of, I heard from X, Y, Z, the prophet, that prophet was finicky about, uh, prophet was very clean. Right? The Prophet Muhammad was uh, was very clean in his daily life, right? So this becomes a hadith, right? A collection of these hadiths put together make the tradition with big T, right? Tradition by with big T, right? Um, and that becomes the Sunnah or way of the Prophet so if you have a, according to tradition if you have a Sahaba a companion of the Prophet who has seen the Prophet and was there when he when the revelations were uh, coming to the Prophet and they were writing it down and this person began memorizing it, right? And then he went to various other places and they, they asked him, what is Islam? He says, well, the Quran says such and such and such. But the Quran doesn't cover everything, right? So then there are other questions about Islam, about the prophet of Islam. And that's where your traditions come, come to form the second um, 
second pillar of Islamic law. So Quran, the first traditions of the Prophet, the second, because not everything is, is uh, contained in the Quran. Um, you ask questions from the Sahaba or from the Tabi'un companions of the companions. How was the Prophet, right? So a lot of, uh, a lot of um, ahadith, Hadith traditions were created, right? And ultimately, these were sifted and they were sorted out by being um, correct, weak, not true, uh, and so on and so forth. And we, we will get to that later, right? But at this point, you have you if you, the Quran doesn't answer you right there is the traditions of pro, um, prophet which is called which is uh, comprised of a sana the chain of transmission and the matin the main text right there is the traditions of the prophet the sunnah as a whole right you don't find it there either you don't find your answer about Islam in Quran or, or your particular answer right in the Quran or in the traditions of the prophet how what can you do you have you you can reason by analogy right so uh, you you which is qiyas right where you say okay um uh, is is uh, is wine permitted in the Quran or not? And then you say, well, beer uh, is not permitted, so wine is not permitted either, right? So this is reasoning by analogy. If that still doesn't uh, get you uh, anywhere, you have to resort to the consensus of the learned men, right, of Islam, which become the ulama, right, from the singular alim, means learned, and ulama, meaning uh, plural of the learned, the, 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 the uh, the, the group of ulama to all consider together, right? Ulam, uh, alims, all consider together, right? And you, you go by the consensus of that. So, you know, uh, uh, according to this, right, um, the Sharia or Islamic law um, could be open to interpretation, um, you know, by analogy or by consensus, right? And, um, and and there are different interpretations of it, and there are more strict interpretations of it, as the, they have it in, in Shizm, in currently the Islamic Republic of Iran, and where they are using it to oppress people, actually, or Saudi Arabia, which, where the Salafi school of uh, uh, law uh, is practiced by the Saudis, right? This is like the more uh, the more uh, conservative, literal traditions of Islam, right? And then they you have the traditions that are more open, uh, such as the ones that are being practiced in uh, in Turkey at the moment, for instance, right? Um, so. Um, this is a, a crash course about um, the the uh, crash lecture about the Sharia and the different components of the Sharia uh, and how they ultimately right came in subsequent centuries came to uh, make the Islamic law, right? Make Isla the Sharia or Islamic law. So my friends, these are your um, uh, videos for uh, this module. I hope I have taught you quite a bit. It is important for you to read your material because my lectures are only meant to 
complement your material, right, your readings and the videos that you see uh, in each module. So until the next module, uh, I bid you farewell and um, uh, I wish you success and be careful and stay healthy and positive in um, your daily life. Uh, till later. Bye.